Jello, and welcome back to Laurent's Vegan Vlogs. Today, on the show, once again, the glorious man, Pierce Morgan, is joining us, and we will be doing a reaction video to a snippet of him chatting to the wonderful Chris Packham, as well as that nonce. I don't really know who he is, but apparently he's a farmer's son. Oh, the woes that he has. Anyway, let's go. It's the Ron's Vegan Vlogs, yeah! Would you stop buying eggs or bacon if you saw photographs on the products of how those animals were genuinely, honestly kept? I think that's, that's a good idea. That's what wildlife expert Chris Packham is calling for. Similar to those on <clears throat> cigarette packets, where it shows the actual effects of cigarette smoke on your lungs. I mean, you make a fool. And the damage that's made. Not Jamaica. Well, the TV presenter is taking part in Veganuary and uh, says the current package is misleading, doesn't reflect the conditions Come on, Chris. that animals are reared in. Mm. We're also joined, well, he's, he's with us live from his kitchen in Southampton, and we're also joined here by Top Chef Richard Corrigan, who thinks the idea is ridiculous and is turning us into a nanny state. So, welcome to both of you, gentlemen. To Chris, look, you, you know, you're a. Uh, a leading light for all things animal rights, and everyone yeah, knows that. A lot of uh, uh, hugely Ooh. influential, important stuff that you've done. My problem with the veganism debate is that I don't care if people want to have a vegan diet. I really don't. It, Do you? People, I, I don't believe in the nanny state about food. You want to mm -hmm. eat, you know, McDonald's or vegan food, you do what you like. I do care when, you know, vegan stormtroopers charge into <laughs> restaurants in Brighton and start screaming abuse at meat eaters mm. and adopting some weird high moral ground with people who choose to eat meat. That's where it's I get annoyed. Is that what you ground. think is, the, it? The is this the it's high moral ground? If you, you put just, on corned uh, beef well, I think it is a, bit, a yeah. picture of the beef and the conditions that it's kept in. So Chris, explain why you're not chief nanny trying to take the high moral ground about all this. Or are you taking the high moral ground? Well, but... <clears throat> No, I'm not taking the high mile ground at all. That's never uh, my approach. I, I'm merely encouraging people to think about their diet, and I think there are three good reasons for that. Firstly, their personal health. We know that eating too much meat is bad for us. Yep. Secondly, we've got the environmental impact, and we know that, ecologically speaking, uh, meat eating is in extraordinarily expensive. And given mm -hmm. the burgeoning human population on the planet, there is no doubt that we can't continue to eat meat at the rate that we're doing so at the moment. So you got right. I'm encouraging people to think about where they get their meat from and, and yeah. what its environmental impact is. And then the third component, and it's one that does impact on many people's choices when they think about leading themselves towards a more vegetarian or even a vegan diet, are those animal welfare conditions. And whilst we are able to implement laws to a greater uh, and, and higher standard in some cases in the UK, we're not overseas. Yeah, and when we go shopping to yep. our supermarkets, mm -hmm. therefore, we can't always be assured of the pod that the products that we get, the animals have been kept in humane right, right. conditions okay. so and, Chris, and as a consequence yeah, of that sure. i think that if we displayed that people would think twice about buying Chris, them what would you exactly. eat, you know we on this pint of or think. two pints of milk you know, here we have pictures of of cows in a dairy farm you went to a dairy farm and immediately stopped consuming dairy oh. what is it that you think people are not having their eyes open to well, one of the problems that we have in the UK is our great disconnect from, from farming and food production. Uh, this that. leads to all sorts of problems, principally a lack of sympathy for farmers and the, and the problems that they have raising food and turning a profit when mm -hmm. so much foreign material is imported into our supermarkets and the supermarkets are bullying our farmers into a corner. So aside from that, we've got people not knowing where that food comes from, particularly young people. And you hear these horror stories where they think that chickens lay one egg a year and cows only produce one pint of milk. When I went to that all indoor oh, dairy where man. these animals never went outside, the idea was so alien to me and I, I thought to myself, well I don't have the time nor the ability to source milk where I know it comes from a, a collection of animals that are being well tended for and are living happy and healthy okay. lives. Well, and as a all, consequence the no easiest option thing. for me That's was just to give up. Okay, out. Richard Curry, yeah, you're a farmer's TV's son, we'll yeah, you're one of the top well, chefs well, in the country. <laughs> What is your response to this? Well, first of all, uh, I'm, uh, I worked on a dairy farm for most of my oh, young life. I eat 120 cows every morning. Uh, the Jeez, indoor uh, dairies milk, that uh, Chris is talking about is something alien to me. I'm talking about grass-fed, outdoor, milk twice a day. 
and the most delicious Cross. product, most nutritional oh. product you could give uh, excuse young me, children nutritional? and families growing and up. And then we just Absolutely we've huge pretty much disproven that over the last few totally years. Totally with you on that, Chris. Nothing to argue about. The indoor, uh, the indoor large-scale piggeries and uh, chicken productions, I'm with Chris on. I'm not going to disagree on everything. It's, it's not all farming. There is some great farming out there. People attacking Not farmers. You, farming. you attack me. I feel, mm -hmm. you know, labels like this make, makes my blood boil. Why? Well, it, it should. Well, for it example, milk it's prices your just lies recovered out there in the open. Four and a half years. Terrible, terrible time. Beef prices hasn't changed in four years. There's no one making fortunes in the countryside. It's it's policy, government, part government policy, part of the free market. Uh, it seems it's not really a free market when you're being subsidised by the government, is it? And then importing cheap food like. Uh, chlorinated chicken from the states because their standards are so bad they have to chlorinate the chicken doesn't make sense to me okay chris let me let me come back to you there's a lot that doesn't make sense to me my friend but uh debate yes yeah. britain appears to be going ever more vegan is if you take some of the staple favorite foods of vegans avocados almonds there we, we now know there is oh. a lot of environmental damage and social damage to the countries where these are uh, taken from the environmental damage of flying them all over here and so on uh, real damage to insects millions of bees in california which produces 80 percent of the world's almonds uh, get killed right in the production of almonds so i wonder how much vegans as they take their halo and put it on their heads about this whether they care about the little Critters, the little creatures. In short, you know, we do. Laugh, we do, Pierce. We really do life. care. I mean, and we're not actually happy about these kind of farming practices. You should be aware of that, my man. Us. We are trying to fight the biggest evil of all, which currently California. is the meat and dairy the industry. And this will come here. second. This will be the next thing that we go for once well, this madness this is, is finally explore, over. But with you running your trap and trying to tell us that we're not the sainted saints that we paint ourselves to be. It's like, shut up, man. Like, as if you are. Look at you with your fat ass belly. You're going to have a heart attack at age 55. And then we're all going to laugh about it. Which shows that the emissions, the land use, and the water use of dairy, traditional dairy, is much greater. But you're right, Piers, when you say down here, look at the water use that almond milk produces. Mm -hmm. And we know that, you know, almonds are grown in California, like you say, where they've got severe drought conditions. They're <laughs> extracting huge amounts of water to grow those almonds. And as you point out, they're moving bees all around North America. It's terribly expensive on these. And, mm -hmm. and it is about all life. It's not just about the cute and the cuddly and the farm animals. It's about the environment and the sustainability of see, it. That's why but I look down here, if you look, look at, at soya and wine. almond, you'll see that they consume a lot more less of these resources mm. yeah. so it's a process of exploration there's no doubt about okay. that and i don't have a halo no, i don't take chart. that holier than thou approach i Hold am on. merely asking people to great think chart. about what they eat and their impact and to explore that but you don't I, drink I've milk I mean, i'm going to pick you up one thing chris you, i mean you you Here become quite evangelist about this in the sense that you don't drink milk you don't eat bread you don't eat any meat presumably Right? No, oh, I don't. No. Right. So, I mean, I am left with the obvious question. What what do you digest? What do you take in? I mean, are we going to remove all well, flavorable... Without meat, bread, mm. and milk, he can't eat anything. Well, no oh, dairy, shit. no bread, oh, no meat. Right. All vegetables, you're left, all impulsive. You're left with what? I suggest. Plants. Again, there are education. The, the, there are something. plenty of My very healthy. tasty alternatives anything. that I'm beginning to discover. I mean, this yeah. is a new process not, for but me. You but you know what? But how many, how many of those... How many of those... Going vegan doesn't mean going without flavor. Let's take... Let's take... Let's take... It doesn't mean going without quality. All right, Chris, let's take the let's take the tasty alternative of the year so far, the Greg's vegan sausage roll. Palm oh, oil, which is of course stashed all over loads of vegan products. So again I come back to the hypocrisy, which is if you're gonna eat loads of stuff like that and claim the moral ground, it's nonsense, isn't it? Your nonsense, Pierce. Well, Seriously. palm oil is something that gives us great concern, and you're listening. absolutely right. Many of the things that I have switched to, I've looked on the back of that packet when I can struggle you know, to understand the food labelling that's there, and I've seen a whole <laughs> lot of palm oil. And this is a process of change that we're going through. But the one thing we have to be absolutely clear about, Piers, is that you know, we have to cut down on our meat eating. Not 
you know, through any personal choice, but through the enormous cost and pressure that this is putting on the environment. The, our population Kim. cannot eat the volume Kim. of meat that it's doing now. We've got expanding populations in India and China who are equally eating a lot more meat than they have mm -hmm. done in the past. We're losing vast areas of the world's forests, which are, you know, repositories of our biodiversity. All of those little yeah. things, all of the okay. life that you okay. and I you know, just love just so right. much, just simply to produce you know, vegetable protein yeah. to feed to animals in an inefficient way. Let's bring, let's bring in Richard again. That, I hear that. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. What's the point if you're going to invest protein, in a future can business, eat the protein. Peers, yeah. would you invest oh, yeah. in McDonald's or Greg's at this point? Because Greg's are thinking about the future. McDonald's probably but, are not. Well, actually, vegan, uh, uh, McDonald's are doing vegan Happy Meals. So they're all at the same game and they're doing it to make money, even if the products they're producing under the vegan label, as in the vegan sausage roll, are actually less healthy for you than a, than a McDonald's cheeseburger. Okay. Richard, so, Richard, right, first of all, it's always going to be more healthy. It doesn't have animal products in it. That well, shit will sit in your gut and rot for three we weeks and make your fart smell even worse than you could ever imagine. Animals, right? So yeah, let's, like, put the calories forest, and stuff aside, because we all know that actually we break down plant protein example, way, example, way, way easier. Come on. Four and, a half, four and a half times more efficient than beef farmers in South America. In fact, there, it's absolutely not. Well, isn't the, so, Richard, isn't the irony that if we put um, pictures of the horrific conditions that pigs are kept in in some factory farms overseas, why are you going to say put some? that on overseas bacon, we know it's you a lot might more promote, than some. actually, British 10,000 pork farms farming. in Poland, you might want to eat pork again, frankly. But let's be honest with you, we're all in a little bit middle-class mode. We all earn good money. We're all mm. very successful. And we, cheap we food don't, comes at a cost. And by the way, we don't have the choices that other people have to make. Mm. We, can, we have any choice. We can go into any top-end supermarket, spend £100 and have dinner. Most Maybe people don't can. have that choice. Mm. That's why there's Trussell Trust up and down Britain, which is a fabulous organisation, mm. an food amazing bank food charity. bank, and people use them of all you know what, I'm just I'm tired of listening to this guy. The point is, and you would have probably seen this in a previous video that I made. Are you saying that we have to compromise our farmers? We, we, Shit, no, you messed no, up. No, right? No, but there's no, there's no denying that. But when, you get lots of when you've got idiots like these spouting their mouths off and telling us that it's just about where we buy our stuff from, that's just not even remotely true. All right, fruits and vegetables will always be so much easier to grow, take so much less land, take so much less water, and if we start to do it with a bit of an ecological conscience behind the action, it's actually going to benefit the planet as opposed to harming it like what is happening in the US with the almonds and with the avocados. So yes, as vegans we do need to be conscious about the whole meat and dairy side of it, but we should also be looking towards the future future, the future future, where we will also be addressing the issues of how our products are farmed to begin with. So now that that video is over, we can actually sort of get back into talking about, you know, normal stuff and stop listening to absolute idiots like that, that milkman, oh my god. Oh, I know that probably pained a lot of you to watch it, especially if you've seen it before. I apologise. I just I have felt that you guys needed to see this because it's just ridiculous the way that people are discussing veganism and the people that they bring in to talk about veganism. I mean, just find like the stupidest, most narrow-minded person you possibly could trying to tell us that Polish farms are absolutely terrible. But no, 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 the British ones are fine. Okay, so let's just remember something here. We live in the EU at least for the next few months. And where does a lot of our products come from? Oh, yes. Right, yes, of course. So there's really not much difference here, right? Trying to tell me that a British farm is much better and nicer for the animals and all this kind of rubbish is not going to help you because at the end of the day, <laughs> the meat is not really coming from there. Right? It's coming from Poland, it's coming from Spain, it's coming from the US, it's coming from cheaper providers because that is what supermarkets want, that's what the consumer wants, they want a cheaper product. End of. Now here's the interesting thing, if veganism was to be given the scale, right, the same scale, this is what we're talking about here, industries of scale, as the meat and dairy industry, you could actually be looking at an option that is cheaper than current day meat prices. Imagine that. Imagine that. You actually pay less for a Beyond Meat burger than you would have for a real burger. Okay, sorry, I'm not even going to call it that. A real burger, right? You paid less for a plant-based protein that actually helped the environment, that soaked up some of that nasty gas that we keep pumping out into the world, filtered it into some good nurturing food, and didn't kill anything. Nothing. Not a single thing got killed because of that burger. 
You go to bed with a clean conscience, a full belly, and you wake up in the morning having lost a bit of weight, looking good, building that vegan muscle. <sighs> yeah. So, the hot topic continues. Pierce Morgan is on the rampage, and it doesn't seem like he's gonna stop anytime soon. It's gonna be a great year for veganism. This man just carries on flapping his mouth. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy it a lot, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it a lot. So if you did, please do like, subscribe, and of course, let me know what you think in those comments down below. But if you didn't, then just leave a dislike and you know tell me in the comments as well. If you want to see something a bit better, if you wanna see Pierce Morgan sitting next to me, that'd be fun. We could tickle his face. <laughs> or something along those lines. Anyway, till next time, I wish you all a most excellent vegan day. And follow me on Instagram for daily updates on my vegan life.